Hello my fashion lovers, welcome to today's tutorial. Please, if you have not subscribed, please click on the subscribe button. It is free. Please like, share and subscribe to my channel. God bless you as you do so. Amen. On today's tutorial, we'll be looking at how to cut a pencil skirt. How to cut a pencil skirt and the blouse as you have seen on the thumbnail that is the style we're going to be cutting That's this style i'll be cutting on the i'll be marking on the lining so that you can be able to see what i'm marking and then i'll transfer to my fabric to cut the pencil skates you're going to fold your material with the biggest part of your body that is the hip, which is the biggest part. You're going to fold it and cut. So let's start. I'll be showing you how to cut and seal the pencil skirt. I folded. The biggest measurement I'm working with is 46. When you divide it by 4, it will give you 11. I'll mark 11 here plus 2 inches so in allowance that is the space I need I'm going to reduce this because I wouldn't want to waste the material to measure out what I need 11 inches plus 2 inches so in allowance is what I need all right let's start from the waist to the hip, I'm going to take 9 inches. Waist to the hip, I'm going to take 9 inches. And the length I'm working with, the length I'm working with is 34. 34 plus 1 is so in allowance will give me 35. 35 I'll mark it here then the waist the waist circumference I'm working with is 43 I'll divide 43 by 4 if I divide 33 by 4 it gives me 10 and a half so I'll put it here 10 and a half Plus two inches so in allowance, depending on how many inches you want. I'll be taking two. Then on this key, I marked 11, 11 inches plus two inches so in allowance for the heat. Then I'll connect. Then on this down part, whatever I have here. On this down part, whatever I have here, I have 13 and a half here. 13 and a half. I'm going to take 11 here on this part. I deducted 3 inches. If you want it to be two pencils, you are free to deduct any amount you want to deduct from here. And then to mark my dart, to mark the dart, you're going to use your nipple to nipple measurement. The one I'm working with is 8 divided by 2. It will give me 4. So I'll mark 4 here. Then on this hip line, I'll come up by, I'm going to take uh, 5 inches. 5 inches for the that then i'll take half inch from here half inch on this side half inch on this side and connect to this that's mm -hmm. now with this i'm going to use it to cut the fabric but cutting on my fabric the fabric is going to be two inches the fabric is going to be two inches longer than this. 
the fabric is going to be two inches longer than my lining because i'm going to turn it up i will sew it and show you as we progress you see what i'm talking about so let's cut first cut The back, the difference between the front and the back is going to be the zip allowance. The difference between the front and the back is the zip allowance. I left one inch. I folded it. This is the front one. It's just one inch. One inch for the zip allowance. Now I'm going to cut. Now, I'm going to use this place on my Ankara fabric, but the Ankara fabric is going to be two inches longer than the lining because I want to turn it up, use it to turn it up. Now, I've placed the lining on the fabric to cut the main fabric, but before cutting the main fabric, the main fabric is going to be two inches longer than the lining, two inches longer than the lining so i'm going to measure two inches i will use this to turn it up then i will cut Now I will cut. Cutting the back, I'm still going to leave two inches at the down part, at the hem part, so that I can be able to hem it very well. For the back, I've placed the back. I'll measure the two inches. I measure the two inches then for the dots it's still the same because of the one inch zip allowance make sure you map out your one inch zip allowance so that you can notch it for the dots it's still the same from this zip allowance I will take four inches And I'll take five inches down for the dots. From here, I'll take half inch. From here, I'll take half inch and connect. Make sure you notch your zip allowance. Notch the zip allowance before you open it up.
open up the back part I'll cut it out Open up the zip allowance. To sew the front part, we are going to open it up. I'm going to use iron to remove this. Open it up. From the front part, I'm going to place the lining on the front part. We place the lining on the front part and sew. Place the lining on the front part. I am going to sew with half inch. I'm going to sew the lining. With half inch. Let me show it and show you. I've finished stitching it with half an inch on the front part. Stitch with half inch. Do not forget to put your dart. Stitch with half inch. Now I'm going to move it. The two inches I left, I'm going to move it down. I'm going to see how I'm going to do it. I notched the part. So I'm going to push this down. I'm going to push this lining down. I'm going to bring up. I'm bringing up the two inches that I left. I'm bringing it up. I notched it so that I will know. This is where it is. I'll bring it up. Then from there. From this place, I'll mash it down with half an inch allowance before turning it to the front side. When you fold it, when you take it off, take it off the allowance we left for the turning. Then, when you turn it, then you mash it from this place, not from the lining, from this place. You mash it down from this place. Mash, take it down. Let me show it and show you. After running the down pass stitches and the sides, I've turned it to the front. I've turned it to the front. See how the down part is going to be. Then use your iron to iron it out. So that when you wear it, you are not seeing any lines on the front. This is how it's going to be. This is the same thing I'm going to do to the back. I'm going to do the same thing to the back. If I stitch it together and put my zip. The same thing I did in the front. That is the same thing I'm going to do at the back. You take the front part of the back skirt. You put your lining on top. Use half inch and mash it down. Mash it down before you turn. Almost the same thing I did in the front. I finished mashing it with half an inch. Then I will raise it up. Raise the allowance that I left. Turn it up. I finished mashing it with half an inch. So I'm going to turn it up like this. Move it up, push it down, 
going to push it down then mash from here that i pushed it down mash it down then turn it to the front so after turning it i'm going to take the from the down part i'm going to i mesh the two bags together now from the down part i'm going to take the opening opening i'm going to take 15 inches i will take 15 inches for the opening then from this zip allowance zip allowance of one inch i will mark it down i will stitch and stop here i'm going to stop here this is going to be the opening the slits then from here if you're going to take your zip if you're going to put your zip you're going to take nine inches then stitch here from here to here but if you're not going to put zip like my client wants me to put through so i'm going to fold this place down i'm going to put it down and put through for her so i'm going to stitch it from here i'm going to stitch from here to here and leave this place for the opening for the slit opening then i'm going to fold the upper part and insert the rope because she doesn't want zip but if you're going to put zip just leave this allowance for your zip then stitch from here to here now we are going to shape with the measurements but shaping it since i'm going to be putting rope i'm going to be putting rope not zip the waist measurement i'm going to use the hip measurement for the waist i'm going to use the hip measurement for the waist but if you are going to put zip you use your normal waist measurements for the rope for the waist the measurement i'm working with is for for the hip the measurement i'm working with is 46 46 divided by um 46 divided by 2 will give me 23 so from here i take this as my where i will put the rope minus this one inch so from here is my hip line this is my hip line so i'm going to take 23 inches from here this is my 23 inches this is my 23 inches so i'm going to measure what i have here what i have here is three three inches when i divide it by two it's going to be one and a half so on this side i'll measure one and a half and on this side i'll measure one and a half the same thing with the waist one and a half the waist measure one and a half I'm going to sew it down. I'm going to take it down. The same thing with the other side. I take it down. Let me sew it and show you. To so cut out the roof for the skirts, I'll be folding. I won't be putting any band. I'll just be folding it in two inches. I'll be making use of two inches. I'll fold it in and stitch with two inches uh, allowance and the waist circumference i'm working with is 43 so the rope i'm going to cut is going to be um i'm going to make it 46 inches long because the waist is 43 so i'm going to make it 46 inches long or i can make it 50 i'll make it 50 inches for the rope i'll cut the rope for this place leave like two inches where i will insert the rope let me cut the rope and show you i finished cutting the rope of 50 inches now i'm going to turn it turn it stitch it stitch it it's quarter inch then turn it to the front
I finish attaching the rope. I finish attaching the rope. See how it is. See how it is. You attach the rope at the middle of your skirt. See how it is. If you have any question, please ask in the comment section. Like and comment on my video. Please subscribe. Alright, we are finished cutting the skirt. Now we are going to cut the blouse. And the blouse is going to be a high-low blouse. High-low blouse. The uh, front is going to be low, while the back is going to be high. Let's begin. To begin, I'm going to look for the, use the bust measurement as the starting point. The bust I'm working with is 46. When you divide it by 4, it's going to give me 11. So I will look for 11 here. This is my level. So I'll be starting from there. Mark a straight line. Now cross check. On this point, I'm going to take my shoulder measurement and the shoulder measurement I'm working with is 19 and a half. Where you divide it by two, where you divide it by two, it's going to give you nine three quarter. So I'll increase my nine three quarter here. This is my nine three quarter for the shoulder measurement. And the neck I'm working with is three. Uh, three and a half inches. I'll mark it so. Three and a half inches for the width and for the length, I'm taking three inches. And I'll connect. On this shoulder line, I'm going to take one inch shoulder slope. And I'm going to take nine inches for the armhole. Take nine inches for the armhole measurement. And from here, I'm going to connect my shoulder slope of one inch. From here, we're going to determine the length. The front length I'm working with is 28. So from here, I'm going to mark 28. Plus one inch sewing allowance, making it 29. And I will take it round, 29. Take it round, 29. I'm going to stop here, then take it round. I'm going to give it a curve. That is the length I'm working with. Now I'm going to impute the boss. The boss measurement I'm working with is 46. 46 divided by 4 will give me uh, 11. I'll impute it. Here, plus two inches sewing so allowance. Give me here on this armhole. I'm going to get the midpoint 
which is four. Four. From the midpoint, I'm going to connect to the bust measurement. Because this is the front part, this is the front part, from this middle part, I'm going to come in by half an inch to avoid holes on the sleeve and I'm going to connect. From here, I'll connect to the shoe. This is for the front measurements. To take the waist measurements, the waist measurement is 17. For the length, and the waist measurement I'm working with is 42. 42 divided by 4. 42 divided by 4 will give me 10 1 quarter. I'm going to add 2 inches to so in the numbers. And on the down parts, okay, from here, I'll connect from here. I'll connect to here. And from here, I'll connect to the down parts. From the bust line, connect to the waist, to the down parts. Now we're going to cut. Now I'm going to cut. With this, I'm going to use it to cut the front. The front part is going to have a little slit. It's going to have a slit. So I'll measure three inches. I'll measure three inches from the neck. I'll open it. With this, I'm going to place to cut the back, which is going to be longer than the front parts. To cut the back, you're still going to throw it the same way you did to the front. Let's throw it like this. And I will place the front here. For this client, she wants her own to have a zip at the back. But for this style, you don't need a zip, but she wants a zip. So I'm going to put only one inch zip allowance. I will extend this part. Leave one inch zip allowance for her. Okay. 
see one inch zip and on the down part i will extend it because i want it to flow a little I want it to flow so I'm going to take the for the back the back measurement is going to be 32 so from here from this neckline I'll measure 32 plus one inch so in the lower one is 33 so this is my 33 this is my 33 my one inch zip allowance For the neck, I'll be taking, for the width is still going to be the same, but for the length, I'll be taking, for the length, I'm going to be taking one and a half inch. Now we'll connect. Now mark one inch for the zip allowance. So I'm going to connect from this place. I'm going to connect. From the end part of the front one, I'm going to connect it. Connect it to the length. For the back. Connect from here. The sides are going to be equal, but the back is going to drop. Very simple. Now I'm going to pop. Now I'm going to cut for the arm hole. I'm going to cut from here. I'm going to mash the zip allowance. You can actually sew this clothes without the zip, but this person wants a zip, so that's why I'm putting a zip. As long as you have the slit, there's a slit at the front, your neck must pass it, it must enter your neck. But because she wants a zip, that's why I'm putting a zip. I'm going to open up the back part.
Now I'm going to cut the facing. I'm going to cut the facing for the front and for the back. To cut the facing, I'll just fold my fabric. Fold the fabric and put. Place the fabric and cut. I'm going to open up this the same way I opened the front. Now I'm going to trim off this where I want it to stop. So this is going to be my facing for the front if you like you iron interfacing on it if you like you can sew it like this and i'm going to reduce this part i'm going to cut the back facing too for the back facing Hold your fabric and put the main fabric to cut. Now I'm going to cut. The back, I will just leave it straight like this. To sew it, to sew it, I will go to the machine, sew this zip allowance, sew it down. To sew it, I'm going to take it to the machine and I'm going to take the front part, take the facing for the front and I'll place it right side facing the right side. I'm going to sew it down. I'm going to sew it, sew it using half inch. I'll sew it and flip it to the back. Let me show it and show you. I finished attaching the facing to the neck. Finish attaching the facing. I whipped out the down part of it. Now I'm going to join the back. I'm going to join the back with the zipper allowance that I left. Join the zip allowance then. Join the front and the back at the shoulder parts. 
Now I'm going to join the two shoulders. The front of the the front will be facing each other. I'm going to hold it like this and so I'm going to mash it. mash it like this and sew it down the same with the other side join it together at the shoulder parts and mash it down now I'm finished joining it on the shoulder I'm going to cut the sleeve, cut the sleeve, and I want to fix the sleeve before I mash it down with the sewing allowance. Let's cut the sleeve. To cut the sleeve, fold your fabric, and I'm going to take the sleeve length. The sleeve length I'm working with is 15, I'll make it 16. One inch sewing allowance. Sixteen. It's going to be my starting point. And for the cap sleeve, I'm going to take four inches. The caps for the cap height. Cap height. I'm taking four inches. And from here. I'll find the middle. I'll find the middle. And I will a straight line. Then I'm going to the round sleeve circumference I'm working with is 15. When I divide uh, 17, when I divide it by 2, when I divide it by 2, it's going to give me 8 and a half. So I will place my 8 and a half here and take my 2 inches sewing allowance. For the elbow, where the sleeve is going to stop, the round sleeve is 13 divided by 2. So give me 6.5. And, and I'll add 2 inches sewing allowance. And I'll connect. And from here, from this middle, I'm going to mark it up. Then go down. Please, if you have any question, ask in the comment section. Now I'm going to cut. With this, I'm going to use it to cut. The second one now I'm going to shape I'm going to shape it using my round sleeve measurements I'm going to shape the round sleeve measurement I'm working with for the distant part is 13 13 divided by so will give me six and a half. Just six and a half. But she doesn't want it to be said. So I will add one inch to it. So I will just shape with half inch. I will shape with half inch. The round sleeve measurement is 17 inches. And I divide it by two. 17 divided by two will give me eight and a half. I'll mark it eight and a half. I 
Daug ko necits. Daug ko necits. For this side, when marking, I used two inches sewing allowance, so I will just use one inch to shape because it's not a fitted blouse. I will just use one inch and shape it down. That is the same thing I'm going to do to the other side. After sewing it, this is how it's going to appear. You just get your this is how it's going to appear then fold the down part and iron it out i'll place it on the mannequin for you to see if you have any question please ask in the comment section please subscribe because i post videos sewing videos every day of the week so subscribe put on your notification bell to be notified anytime i post a video Thank you very much.